In April, I was in Somaliland for a documentary for Rudaw TV. During my visit, I met the country's foreign minister, Saad Ali Shira, and had a conversation with him about Somaliland's process of state building and their struggle for international recognition. Yeah, it has been very useful. Okay, Mr. Saad Shiri, thank you for giving us this uh, opportunity for an interview with uh, Rudaw TV. Uh, so I would like to ask you a few questions about the situation in Somaliland, uh, your foreign policy and diplomatic efforts and all that. And the first question is, I'm aware that for 25 years, Somaliland has been trying to gain international recognition. Uh, why do you think the world is not willing to give you that recognition? What's the reason? Mm -hmm. Well, first I would like to welcome you to Somaliland and to the capital of Somaliland and especially to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's our pleasure to have you here. Um, it's true. Well, let me first perhaps give you a bit of the background history of Somaliland. Somaliland was a former British protectorate from 1887 to June 26, 1960. So Somaliland was on the map for 73 years. It's not a new country. And then in 1960, when we took our independence, we formed a government with the prime minister and a cabinet, and uh, we had uh, legislature. Uh, and then at that time, there was a lot of uh, anti-colonial sentiment and feeling within the community. There's a lot of African nationalism, you know, within the continent. And, uh, and, you know, people wanted to see all Somali-speaking regions come together. There was that dream of creating greater Somalia. Uh, and in that wave of sentiment, I think we rushed into joining Somalia. Uh, even though, in fact, the, the union was legally questionable in the way it happened, because it was supposed to, uh, to happen this way. It was supposed that the Parliament of Somaliland will pass a union law, and the Parliament of Somalia will also uh, pass a union law. The two will be put together, and then the two will be, and then the outcome will be signed by both parties. That was the way it was supposed to be done. But it wasn't done at all. In fact, the, the union law uh, proposed by the Somalia legislature was ignored totally, you know, and we didn't sign any union as such with Somalia. And when uh, the, 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 the union law you know, proposed by Somalia was put to, on, on a, to, to a referendum, uh, the, our, our people in Somalia, in fact, rejected it. The majority of the people voted against the, the union law, against the anti-constitution. Anti so, you know, there wasn't really much of a union. There was a desire for a union, but legally the union really did not take place in a way. But nevertheless, we have been together for 30 years, and during those 30 years, the people of Somalia felt marginalized, you know, and discriminated against us, and suffered a lot, uh, particularly in the last 10 years, in the hands of the Siad Berre government, which was in power the, uh, you know, at that time. We lost uh, from 1981 to 1991 maybe up to 100,000 people. And uh, there was. How? In uh, prisons, executions, or how? Well, I mean, particularly in the later half of the 80s, there was a sort of a uh, genocide campaign against our people. Uh, up to now, we have identified 243 mass graves in the country. And separate mass graves. Separate mass graves, 243 separate mass graves. And the country was entirely mined. They laid more than a million mines. We have identified up to roughly 1,000 mine fields in the country. This was all done by the government. By the government itself. The government of everyone. The government itself. Mm, not a foreign country. No. And this city, Hargeisa, the capital, was flattened. It so was bulldozed to the ground by aerial bombardment and artillery shelling by the government itself. So basically, you gave Somalia a chance yeah. for 40 years yeah. to live years. together, uh, yeah. uh, in 30 years, to yeah. live together in real partnership yeah. and in a democratic place. But what yeah. you got in return was 
this bombings and killings. Yeah, we were victimized, basically. Mm -hmm. And then in 1991, when the government collapsed, we have been fighting against the government for, uh, you know, 10 years. And when finally it collapsed, our people decided to leave the union because that wasn't serving any purpose at all. You know, the net reset of the union was total destruction and displacement. And our people, you know, came together and said, well, that's enough. We're going to reclaim our independence. And they declared, you know, independence. And that was 25 years ago. And since then, we have been an independent country with, uh, you know, uh, with a democratic uh, form of government. We have an elected president and an elected parliament, uh, elected councillors. We have our own army, our own police people, and our own flag and currency. You know? So you mean as soon as Somaliland started ruling itself in 1991, yeah. things started to change for the better, the opposite of what it was under Seyad Barri. Absolutely, absolutely. I think what we have achieved in the past 25 years is, you know, has no comparison with what was done in the previous 30 years or so. Okay. Just to give you an example, uh, in 1991 there wasn't one single university in the country. Today we have more than 30 universities. That's just an example. Somalia. Yes. And uh, so you have uh, this functioning uh, democracy here. You have elections in Somaliland, elected president, elected members of parliament, and stability. Because Somaliland, Somalia, we know what it has been going through since mm. the early 90s. Uh, going back to the first question, why the world is not recognizing you. Is right. it about the consideration of sovereignty yes. or what? Well, in a way, Somaliland is a de facto state in the sense that it, it, it meets all the requirements of a state. It has a defined boundaries, international boundaries. It has a defined population. It has a government in control and authority. You know, um, it has the ability to enter into agreements with other countries, with international companies. So it has been, in fact, I, you know, we, ha we, have, we have achieved a de facto recognition. The only thing that's missing is the sovereign recognition of Somalia. Uh, and that, I think that should be easy because you have already declared independence yes. since 91. And the, the yes. difference with the Kurdistan region, for yes. example, is that it is almost a state. Yes. It is ready to be a state, but has not officially declared. Yes. You are one step ahead yes. because you declared. Yeah, we declared. We declared. So yeah. what's the reason they don't give you that recognition? Do right. we want to fix Somalia? Do you I think, think Somalia could yes. be Yes. I think there are maybe two main reasons. One has to do with Somalia. I mean, there is the notion at one point that, well, uh, let us first fix Somalia before we address the issue of Somaliland, you know. <clears throat> and then, of course, there is the issue of, uh, you know, uh, we, we started talking with the Somalis back in 2012, and some of the people are saying, well, let us wait for the talks to, to succeed, you know, you know, or end somewhere. So, I mean, that's another reason. Of course, Somalia is still claiming Somaliland, even though in fact we have nothing to do with Somalia at the present time, and that's an issue in it itself. Uh, a lot of Europeans would say, well, this is uh, an African matter, so why don't you uh, talk to the AU and you know, get uh, uh, recognition from the African countries before we can recognize. But uh, we think that's not right at all for many reasons. Well, first, we have a good legal case at the end of the day for Somaliland to be recognized by the international community. And I think we have also a moral case, you know, taking into consideration all the, all the things that, you know, that, that we went through and the suffering our people had to you know, bear during the, 40, during the 30 years in association with Somalia. So we think we have both legal and, and humanitarian uh, you know, case uh, for us to be recognized by the international community. But I think it's just a matter of time. We're very optimistic. Okay, and if Somalia, uh, I've heard or read in places that if the world says if Somalia recognizes you, then it would make it easier for the yeah. world to recognize. Is, do, do you think Somalia will ever say, okay, I recognize you as an independent state? Well, I, I really hope so, because I honestly believe that the recognition of Somaliland by everyone, including Somalia, will also benefit Somalia itself. You know, I think we will be better off as neighboring, brotherly, you know, countries 
who will cooperate on all issues of mutual, of mutual interest. There are some concerns, or some in the world, they say if the Kurdistan region of Iraq declares independence, yes. it will cause instability yes. in the region, which is not true. Yes. Uh, it will, the Kurdish leadership says no, it will create more stability. Yes. Is the, do people say the same thing about Somalia? They do, they do. In fact, you know, a lot of people talk about the opening of a Bandora box, you know, this is what they say. But we had a, a, a mission from the AU in 2005 and in fact, they put together a very good report, a very positive report, and they said that wouldn't apply in the case of Somaliland because there is no, there is no case like Somaliland, you know, in the, in, the, in the history of Africa. So there is no comparison, and the independence and the recognition of Somaliland will not cause the Bandora box, you know, people talk about. So, because there's no country without history. Especially because you voluntarily joined Somalia. Yes, it's yes. not that you are separating from Somalia. Yes, yes. We voluntarily joined. We were not uh, forced by anyone at all. And we voluntarily left the Union. You know? And this is not the first time this, has, this, this, was, this happened in Africa. There were other instances, for example, Senegal and Gambia. They joined as two independent countries and then separated as two independent countries. As you know, there was a union between Syria and Egypt at one point, and they separated again, you know, peacefully. And, and even there were cases where, like Sudan, you know, where you had <coughs> one country, uh, which now is two, uh, peacefully separated. I mean, they had a war for a long time, but the separation was negotiated, and they separated, and that did not cause the Pandora box. You know? yeah, actually, I think Hopefully. most separations in cases like Kurdistan, Somaliland, South Sudan, yeah. it uh, stops bloodshed yes. and suffering. Yes. But when you are forced together, it's only yes, destruction absolutely. and war. Absolutely. I think it's more stabilizing than destabilizing. Yes. And uh, uh, as a foreign minister, uh, can you tell us that uh, what's the foreign policy of Somaliland? Is it to have good relations with all of its neighbors? Mm -hmm. Because some fear that uh, uh, an independent Somaliland or an independent Kurdistan or some other places might mm -hmm. pose a threat to one of its neighbors or to the neighborhood. Do yeah. you pers what kind of foreign policy do you pursue? Yes. Well, in our, in, in our foreign policy, we pursue three strategies. One is political strategy. And has to do with you know building good relations with the international community and with other countries and collaborating with them on many areas of mutual interest and or concern. Uh, the second strand of the second strategy is the economic strategy. You know, you know we want to attract as many investors as possible, and but also we want to ensure that we receive you know aid from the international community, and but we also pursue. Uh, a security strategy mm -hmm. to make sure that you know we create allies uh, you know who uh, have share the same interests with us to make sure that our country and our region is peaceful and stable. Mm -hmm. So these are the sort of policies that we follow within the foreign policy. Has any country refused to deal with Somaliland diplomatically or economically uh, out of consideration for Somalia? Is there any country that says, sorry, I can't deal with you because Somalia will be upset? Absolutely. Well, not really, not really. In fact, I have been to 13 countries, I think, in the last year, and this year I've been to six countries, and I met uh, with, you know, a dozen ministries even this year, and, you know, I have had never come across someone who would say, you're talking rubbish, you know, we don't agree with you. I think everybody who hears the story of Somalia and is very sympathetic says, well, you know, I think you should be recognized. So uh, I think we have a compelling case here in Somalia for the international community to recognize. Okay, and uh, do you think if you, uh, if w how many countries are willing or have expressed to Somaliland willingness to recognize you, but they wait for another country to do it first. Yes. Is there a country, is there a country? Yes, like well, that? in fact, there are, there are several countries who said, you know, we'll be the second one, not the first. <laughs> you know, I, w I, w I wouldn't mention that in front of the camera, but uh, I think there's a lot of sympathy mm -hmm. around the world for Somaliland case. Okay, and uh, so, so far, no country has recognized Somaliland? Not yet. Okay, and... Uh, but currently you have good relations with Djibouti, Ethiopia and yes. 
We do. And you haven't posed a threat to Somalia? Not at all, not at all. I mean, for the past 25 years, you know, we didn't cause any trouble in Somalia. We don't, that's not our intention. In fact, our vision is a peaceful, stable region which is economically integrated in this part of the world. That's our vision. So we mean no harm to anyone. We don't mean harm any, even to Somalia, despite all the suffering that, you know, we, you know, that, uh, that, that we experience in the hands of Somalia in the 30 years we were together. Mm -hmm. the, do you think uh, the world should know more about Somaliland? Is there enough knowledge out there in the world about here? My real feeling is that people don't know very much or as much as they should about Somaliland. I mean, ignorance, I think, is one of the barriers to, to, to recognition for Somalia, and we're working on that. I mean, nowadays, you know, the internet, the social media, you know, enable you to reach all parts of the world, so we are working on that. But I think, you know, the more people know about Somalia, the better. Mm -hmm. And do you, uh, do you follow the politics or the situation in the Kurdistan region of Iraq? What do you think about that? Yes, I think people, people of Somalia follow very much what's happening in Kurdistan because uh, you know, we have similarities, there are a lot of similarities and sympathy, in fact, for the, for the case of Kurdistan as well. So, yes, we do. Yeah. Thank, you so Thank you so much, Mr. Saad Shira, for this opportunity. And uh, it was nice talking to you. It's my pleasure. You. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.